and we're live what's up my uh, phone was telling me rotate your screen you don't want it to be vertical let's see here what's up guys how's it going i hope you're doing awesome i'm doing awesome except my knee hurts and i slammed my finger in <laughs> at in the door and at the gym on the same finger on the same day and I developed a hematoma and then keto helped that little hematoma that was out to here shrink down to nothing so I'm gonna get right on to it as you guys are joining the chat hopefully I can get in and out because I normally do two-hour broadcasts and pff, too much stress to do two-hour broadcasts what's up guys what's up got Abe in the house and Greg and he's like I'm first Cindy what's up Austin Texas did you go to paleo FX did you go to paleo FX cuz that's where I was at right okay okay let's see here we got Elena from Minnesota we got Missouri in the house what's up everyone you didn't go to paleo FX <laughs> Why not? Got San Antonio Texas paleo FX is really cool this year I'm going to actually do a product review video, like I'm not in any type of partnership with these people or affiliate program. I just found some cool stuff that I want to talk about along with the dumb intermittent fasting and stuff like that. So let's get on to it. If you guys, uh, as you guys want to, you can also in it, thumb, give some thumb love, but I'm going to pound the information. It's not going to all be like hearts and happiness. We're going to do the keto information. What's up from Miami? What is up? Hey guys, blessings back to you. So um, I'm in my Sunday garb, right? People are like, <laughs> I just got back from Paleo Effects. They're like, we've never seen you with so much clothing. And I was like, actually, it's the same, except I was wearing a top over the workout top, but I digress. Of course, I didn't finish my book. It's the ep when Look, when the book is finished, y'all will know. Trust. It will be announced over and over. You will not have to guess or ask. Okay, guys. So I want to talk to you about, uh, as you guys are joining the chat, I want to talk to you about this whole keto thing, the intermittent fasting nonsense. I want to talk to you about workouts. I want to talk to you about anything you want to, like thyroid, autoimmunity, macros like now people are saying that keto is bad for you just all that information mTOR pathways uh, how you use protein insulin is a big one that you guys need to learn about candida another one biofilms nastiness um, who actually adapts who does not shall we um, shall we get into this uh, energy I got some energy right my knee hurts so I'm not gonna jump today <laughs> I've been doing too much work to build my glutes and my quads and my hamstrings so my knees a little irritated uh, collagen powders uh, you got to make sure it's from well-sourced animal because now there's so many companies even bodybuilder companies are like oh there's collagen in it that is garbage and that's a big problem when people try to commercialize on trends, especially things that you eat. They're not regulated. They are not of the high quality. And then what? You think you're going to help all your connective tissues, but you're still drinking alcohol. Like that stuff only works when you get REM sleep and detox. Booyah! <laughs> okay, let me see what we were cooking today and just took a shot of MCT oil. Wanted to try it alone wasn't bad but you know MCT oil is fine it's fine but it's devoid of lauric acid so coconut oil is like way better just saying and people are not adapting on MCT so let's go with the animal fat but I'm glad you took a shot of it can help get past the blood-brain barrier and give you some energy and a hui some a la svenska sayer po svenska and a hui and a hui and a hui okay uh let me see any more comments coming in? Okay, yes, MCT. Let's skate, right? I need to do a skate video. I need to show all these keto people and bodybuilders what it, what time it is to go and skate, right? A ramp, no doubt. Okay, um, don't say my name. What is it? Because your question. I still have 
Yeah, okay, I won't say your name. Look, let me just put it out there. Because I'm going to go into Candida. A lot of you got some anal itching because of Candida. So I will go over that. It's totally common. So we should be embarrassed about nothing. Uh, but butter is better. Yes, butter is always better. Always, 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 always. MCT oil gives you a headache because it's probably processed poorly and you might have a sensitivity to pure MCTs or even the coconut itself. Okay guys, so we got 47 people in the house. What? I guess I don't broadcast enough. What? 47? 47 and only 15 likes before I dive into this mother sucker. Can you guys give Steph some thumb love? Because when you give me thumb love in a live broadcast, it actually reaches more people. So we can get the right information out there. Because people are like, I didn't even know you existed. You know, I've been following you. I was like, what? Yo, I've been doing this for a long time. People can find me right away. But there's so many keto coaches out there. Nobody can find me anymore. Uh, you're incredibly worried about Candida. Don't be. It's so common. And I'm going to tell you how to fix that shite. What about macros on the website? Um, going back and forth. Really don't want to mess with my goals. So I'm going to explain all of that. I'm going to explain all of that. Okay. Love with thumbs. Yes. All right. So we got 30 thumbs and 53 people in the chat. Come on, y'all. I'm going to break this stuff down. You know, when you listen to other people, they don't give you the middle bits. They just kind of like broad stroke. Oh, keto's amazing. Oh, keto sucks. They don't tell you how and why. I don't break into that right to now. <laughs> All right. Here we go. I'm going to go into it because as this goes onto the replay, people are going to be waiting for me to break into the information. So let's go with it right now. Okay, because uh, somebody asked me well, why do you four cups of eating spinach send her to the bathroom? It's because you probably have a sensitivity. Spinach is a high histamine food, and if you have a sensitivity to spinach, it's going to send you to the bathroom with some people. All right, let's get into the intermittent fasting. I'm going to shush, 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 press that real fast. Then we're going to go into the workouts. Then I'm going to go into everything else that you guys want to know as much as I know. So intermittent fasting, all the rage. And if you ask individuals why they do it, They'll say that they want it for its health benefits. But if I ask people to break it down further, they can't because they don't know. So most people are doing intermittent fasting with coffee for weight loss strategies, and they are a hot mess. So with that said, the problem is, and I've, I've discussed this before in other videos, that when you're fasting to a body that's used to glucose and store glycogen, right? That's a problem. So for every one bite of carbohydrate, your body can hold up to four grams of water. So you can hold a lot more electrolytes when you have cellular water, sodium, potassium, magnesium. So when you go keto or when you fast, your electrolyte balance drops exponentially, especially people are doing the fasting in the wrong way. So now they're calling it time restrictive eating between a six hour window. So you might eat lunch and dinner. There's still problems to that type of restrictive eating, which is overeating at dinner, right? Which then there's the cortisol melatonin shift, and you guys are trying to digest your foods. So unfortunately, because your body wants to hibernate at night, you're not digesting that dinner very well, which stays like a lump in your stomach. And it's an inflammatory response, which can make, make your sleep patterns go wake up and fall like you don't sleep well when there's like a brick in your stomach. And that's why you guys are not waking up hungry. So when people, now this goes for people who just eat late as well, but for people who are intermittent fasting, this is a big problem. So think about it. Your body's used to glycogen, stored glycogen is in the muscle, it's the gas tank. Now it's empty. Now your brain's like, okay, you're going 100 miles an hour and there's no, there is not enough stored glycogen because we've been using it all night, sleeping, trying to di digest that brick in the stomach. <laughs> and then you don't get up and eat because you're not hungry, right? So you're exhausted because you slept like shite. And so you're not hungry. Another reason why you're not hungry, so you go for the coffee, but I do it for the taste. No, 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 no. So the body gets used to the caffeine. So your cells of your body will tell your brain that you like the routine of it and the smell of it, right? And then you're putting some butter in there and you think that you are nutritionally balanced. 
You're not. All right. So getting up to a bulletproof coffee is garbage. So number one, roasting kills off half the antioxidants. So when people are saying that there's antioxidant benefits and my lens feels kind of greasy from all the fat. I feel like I need to wipe it off. Maybe I should. Um, so that's a problem right there. Okay, so people aren't consider considering things like hypoglycemia. Are you hypoglycemic? Because a lot of people have unstable blood sugar who try to intermittent fast to lose weight. And they do not get the business, right? So I say this in every broadcast and every video, you know, my age. Now I'm 50 and I will be turning 51 very soon. So 50, turning 51, and as you guys can see, I've got a good amount of testosterone. That's what builds the muscle, right? I'm not as catabolic because I'm using ketones and I have a lean body mass, but I'm not dry. I say this in all the videos. You can see that I'm not dry. This is somebody who's not dry in her 50s, right? And my skin color has nothing to do with the preservation of all the collagen and the elastin in my skin, if I'm eating a poor diet and not sleeping, that stuff won't matter. I may not get the fine wrinkles, but you won't see dexterous, strong skin on brown person if they're living poorly. That's just the way it is. So if you intermittent fast and you're not eating breakfast and your body and you have blood sugar dysregulation and you wake up in the middle of the night because you have a hypoglycemic fit, so your body goes into hyperglucogenesis breaks down muscle to spike your blood sugar so you don't go into a coma, right? That's why you wake up, because your cortisol spikes, because it was too low. You had hypoglycemia in the middle of the night. So if it, this interrupted sleep and beyond a lot of things, people are like, their central nervous system is crack a lacking because their mouth is open because they have sinus infection, infections or deviated septum. And then your body has been running from a lion all night long, and then you're gonna go and fast. And then the brain's like, but I need some gasoline to drive this Maserati. Because if you don't, you're going you're gonna to turn it into like, what, like a 1982 like Hyundai. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's not working. So the problem is your brain is dependent on glucose. And you're going to get up and you're going to fast and you're going to drink a coffee, which is very acidic to the bloodstream, right? It's going to overstimulate the adrenals to pump out energy it doesn't have. It does not have. Why does my camera feel blurry? Okay, anyway, uh, so then it's a diuretic and you're not hydrating yourself because you're dehydrated by the time you wake up, especially with your mouth open. There's all these little varying factors that people don't think when they do diet trends. And it behooves me that they never look amazing. They're like, I lost 60 pounds. I'm like, and you look sick. You don't look spry. You don't got the business. Like your testosterone didn't spike. You guys don't look at weight on the scale in absolute, de absolute desperation to burn body fat. Because I've seen guys, they're like, they're getting smaller and smaller. I see them at the gym all the time, right? I'm a gym rat. And it's like, they're trying to lose weight, but they can't get rid of that flank fat. They can't get rid of it. It just stays. You're not going to get rid of it, guys. You're not going to get the rid of the lower belly fat. And women, that's a whole nother subject. Guys, you're not going to get rid of the low belly fat. You're not going to get rid of the flank fat ever. Nope. Not if your brain is dependent on glucose and then you're going to go run around doing a bunch of stuff. If you fast, you must rest. If you fast, you must do nothing. Because if you start driving that car 100 miles an hour or kilometers <laughs> and you don't put anything in the tank, it will break down muscle. People are like, oh, so when I do cardio, am I burning fat? I'm like, no, you're mostly burning muscle. And that's the reason why I see you every day. Your body does not change ever. Why are not we having this discussion? Intermittent fasting is just dieting because you guys aren't learning the science of what you need to do if you actually fast. Like, what about your electrolytes? You need enough sodium, potassium, magnesium. And when you fast, especially when that potassium gets too low, how many of y'all get them benign heart palps? I'm just saying. The car is a well-oiled machine. You just can't go frack with it because if you mess with the balance of mother nature because you want to get ripped, because you want to look aesthetic, mother nature's going to come and smack you back. And that, and then people develop uh, feeding disorders, eating disorders, because they might fast for a couple weeks and they reintroduce high levels of glucose back in the bloodstream and the brain, the, right, the medulla is like, boom, explosion. And then your endocrine system just goes wonky. Your insulin's like this, 
Oh, la, 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 la. And we know that candida explodes, right? And then the cravings become stronger because that candida got like a shotgun, boom, worth of glucose, right? Who's that guy that was doing the, the carb um, back the night, carb night with like sugar and you got candida? Really though? When we are so desperate to be aesthetic, we'll do all, anything dumb without looking at the consequences. If you fast, you must do nothing. Right? People can't criticize me because my little brown booty is almost 51. All right? So you can't say like, oh, she's got, she can't say anything. She can't say anything. No, I can say a lot. All right. That's the fasting, right? So unfortunately, you tend to be more gluconeogenic. Your adrenals are over firing, trying to give you a brain because the brain doesn't care that you want to be aesthetic. The brain needs energy and it's just not going to survive on liver glucose, right? You're moving too much while you're fasting. You need to restore glycogen. Kiefer, thank you. I didn't want to say his name because I'm not trying to call out people anymore. I'm just saying these dumb trends like Learn the science, people. Don't even take my word for it. Just go out and learn the science, right? I've been able to genetically, epigenetically balance my body because I'm not just messing with this stuff. I'm very careful because if you intermittent fast the wrong way, you can develop thyroid disorders, right? Hypoglycemia, a rebound of your insulin staying too high, right? You can develop physiological insulin resistance. I'm not kidding. You cannot mess with your body if you're not regulated. If your body hasn't found homeostasis, which almost none of our bodies have because we've been gutted by eating the wrong foods, living the wrong life, poor, high blood pressure. You guys don't even know your blood pressure. And then you're doing these diets, even keto the wrong way. You know when I say you're doing keto the wrong way, it can frack you up. So I hope that sort of covers intermittent fasting because I could literally do a whole book on it. So every time I, I work with, I work with so many clients. I started video blogging on this stuff years ago when there was nothing on the internet because my mother had a glioblastoma cancer. I wasn't trying to be aesthetic. I was like, how do I get my mother to not die? Then I started researching keto and there was nothing out there and there was no one. There was like this many people. And then people are like, oh, who are you? I'm like, well, who are you? What up? I started working with people and they weren't adapting and they were not adapting until we started switching things up. You got to deconstruct before you reconstruct, right? Because we are all metabolically challenged. We have problems. We have problems with glute 4 receptors. Our receptors are blunt. They're not accepting the insulin. We're having issues. Severe is insulin issues, pancreatic issues. We have gut issues that candida, that's a whole nother like, that's like a five hour talk. These things will affect homeostasis in the body. If you wanna look aesthetic, you gotta look at the small little bits. You just can't go for the trend. So, no, we didn't eat a lot of nuts and berries because berries, berries, and we couldn't eat all species of nuts because a lot of them are poisonous. We have hybridized out the poison, so don't generalize. No, okay? And the fruits we ate and the berries tasted like sour candies. They weren't sweet. So, I digress. Now, you try to challenge me on the nuts and seeds? Let's go. Let's go with it. I know what time it is. These are people who defend things or are addicted to stuff. All right, so I'm gonna hit workouts and then I'm going to hit your questions. Uh, Please, please provide you with more likes. <laughs> we got 80 people here and I'm on this hyper rant. <laughs> I trust you when I'm alone, I'm very chill. But I'm really excited to talk about, I haven't done a live, I did a live broadcast the other day, um, but it was really messy because I was doing a podcast and we tried to live broadcast it. But there's 83 people in the chat and right now. And if you guys want me to crank out more info, give me some thumb love. I know it must be some just Pastor buyers like what's this chick talking about um, that aren't giving me thumb love because they're on the edge of like I'm gonna leave this broadcast or I'm gonna stay in it 
But for those who've been following me, it'd be great if you could give me some thumb love because that reaches more people. Now, with that said, let me go into... Uh, just remember, even Granny Smith, apples, like everything's been hybridized or genetically modified or altered. So I'm going to go into that in a second. Now, um, I want to find black and Asian. All right, so here we go. Workouts. Now, we need what? We need nice insulin receptor site development. Group 4 receptors. The reason why people who are athletic can take more carbohydrate is because their body noses, 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 my English is fabulous. Uh, these type of athletic people with, with nice muscle mitochondria, they are very, they're more flexible with their metabolism. What that actually means is that their body can uptake that glucose and use it. A lot of you guys don't have a lot of metabolic flexibility. The mitochondria works in this flex and release. What is it? I wrote it down. Um, it's called, um, yes, it's called coupling and uncoupling. So you want to be able to couple that mitochondria and have it be flexible so you guys can actually use the energy that's being produced. Now, we can create blood sugar without even eating a drop of carbs. So we want to have nice metabolic flexibility so obviously the more muscle you have, the more activity you're gonna have in your mitochondria with, as long as your receptors aren't blunted for insulin, you can uptake that glucose and use it. But for those who aren't lifting, right, or they're doing too much catabolic exercise, which is a lot of running and a lot of cardio, and their glycogen storages are depleted, they might have some glue for receptor development but nowhere like you have somebody who just primarily lifts, right? And gets that sliding filament response, right? The sliding filaments that grind, that create that blistering effect and then create muscle and then more coupling inside that mitochondria. So that's where people are starting to build muscle when they have insulin regulation. These are people who tend to live more of a healthy life instead of going like, I can eat McDonald's and be really ripped. Most people aren't like that and as you get older, right? Your DNA is going to shorten and you won't have the ability to clear out all that glucose or reconvert it back into glucose from the fat cells, triglyceride. Now with that said, uh, working out is fantastic. So the kind of workouts, and I get so many people trying to, again, they do the intermittent fasting with the interval training. And I'm looking at them, I'm like, you're not aesthetic. I mean, you don't even have energy. Like you actually look kind of tired. You look like the kidneys, right? The kidneys are starting to suffer because you don't get enough electrolytes, you're not getting enough water, you're not getting enough rest, and you're overextending the body with not enough glycogen storage. So that's the reason why I want people to lift, right? You don't slam your blood pressure up because blood pressure is a big, huge indication of what your health is. And a lot of, a lot of us, we don't study this kind of stuff. Super important to understand your blood pressure. Because a lot of us don't know what it is, especially post-workout, right? That's a huge indication. Or your adrenal health. Are you cortisol slathered, right? Is your cortisol inverted? These are things that matter when it comes to getting lean, not eating chicken breast, tuna, and rice. So with that said, the kind of workouts that I suggest for people to do is body weight resistance training, anything that's resistant because you want that grinding effect, right? With the muscle fibers, that's gonna make that coupling effect within the mitochondria and make you strong, metabolically flexible. Without all of this cardio, right? Glycogen's just uh, depleted and you're doing all this cardio and the body starts to be too catabolic and then you uncouple. That's the problem. So um, when you're doing keto, keto is a stress to the body because until it learns how to use ket ketones, uh, how do I explain it? Mm, if it's viable, that's what that's the word I like to use. If it's actually, if your body's actually using the ketones, because ketones can be produced and just end up in your urine, and then that's not going to do anything. So unfortunately, a lot of the PhDs don't go that down that far down the rabbit's hole. They understand the process of making acetoacetate and acetoacetate and getting into the Krebs cycle. They understand the science of it, they can pass the blood-brain barrier and the brain can use it, but they really don't think about the in-between stuff. Like, do you have histamine intolerance? Do you get like, do you got like, do you get gassy if you eat a salad? You know what I mean? If you have some raw veggies. They don't talk about that. They don't talk about biofilms. 
your poop floating or your pee being bubbly or that you're crashing or hypoglycemia or thyroid or guys with low testosterone like should I go with testosterone the guys getting older like should I do HRTs or women like oh I feel so crazy and so moody should I do some progesterone cream like no one talks about these types of things so I'm breaking it down simplistically when it comes to simple things like well if your blood pressure is running high or if you um, if you're exhausted all the time, you might have some adrenal insufficiencies or wake up tired. Maybe perhaps you should focus on stuff that doesn't put a lot of pressure on the adrenals, which is resistance training. That's what's going to help build bones, and bones have the fountain of life within the marrow. So sometimes we just have to look at um, things differently. Also, the circadian rhythm. Um, now, somebody's talking about uh, Tabata and Sprint. All of these things can only be done to somebody who's metabolically flexible. So if you're exhausted all the time, you do a workout, you want to crash, but you hear that Tabata and Sprints is great to lose weight, you're not going to lose weight because the body's going to try to hold on to the fat because it doesn't understand that you want to be aesthetic. It only understands survival. It's not like this one guy said, it's not like you turn on a faucet water and the water drain, like, you know, calories in, calories out. If you've got a drain at the bottom and, and a sink at the top and it's dripping water, it just comes out. If you're metabolically inflexible, right, you don't have enough glute for receptor development. If you have a thyroid problem and the, where your body is, or you have a, excuse me, blood sugar insulin problem, you're not going to lose weight. It doesn't work like that. The body's not like a mathematical, mathematical equation. So it doesn't matter that this guy did this and this woman did that and my grandfather lived till he was 90. That like doesn't matter at all. You got to go what's happening to the general population, which is observational studies. Let's see here. Okay. So I'm going to take your questions and then I better go. And my knee is killing me because I have been on it. I've been trying to build more muscle. As you guys know, I have a knee injury. Uh, from being a pro skateboarder on big vert vertical ramps. So I ganked myself, I broke everything in the knee joint. So I try these uh, sort of experimental therapeutic exercises to build my hamstrings, my glutes. But with that, I'm just overusing the knee. So I've got to take it easy with that. So hit me with some questions and then I'm out. Okay, so leaky gut. That's another great subject. You all should know about it. Um, what's the best leaky gut supplement? Um, not probiotic, that's for sure. Great Lakes Collagen, no. To be honest, the best uh, leaky gut supplement is sleep. Because the body will, if it's inflamed or if you've got mucus lining problems, ulcerations, Crohn's, holes in the gut wall, if you take away the foods that are inflammatory and bring down the stress, those junctions that were normally tight that opened will close. To be honest, I can tell you to do collagen, I can tell you to do glutamine, but I can tell you to do slippery elm. That's not what's going to seal the gut lining, you know, it's staying away or rotating the foods that create created the opening, which can be cheese and wheat and things of the alcohol, things of this nature. Uh, let's see here. Just to do to depth faster, um, sleep, eat a lot of fat, and protein moderate to low, and really high quality pasture, non factory farmed animals will help you adapt quicker if you can get your stress down and get your fat up, and don't eat just a bunch of olive oil and coconut oil, get your animal fats up high, but really well sourced, like, and get sleep. Sleep's like number one, to be honest. Um, let me see, choo -choo -choo. thank you, Debo. Do you, okay, do we have to eat a ton of veggies? No, in fact, with keto, you can do about like six to nine cups of veggies a day measured raw. And a lot of you guys have leaky gut, so raw vegetables sometimes have a histamine response with some people because they have salicylates, so, hello, salicylates, oxalates, goitrogens, nightshades, lectins, and with people with sensitivities, that's what opened up the walls of your intestine to create the opened junctions and not tight is these foods because plants don't have teeth, they have plant chemicals, and when you're eating these foods all the time out of season, you can create holes in the gut wall and it's a mess. So sometimes you gotta cook them, don't eat salads if you have leaky gut and rotate your foods. Okay, and you don't have to eat a ton of veggies. You can eat like, you know, you can eat six to eight cups and I eat more. I eat more veggies now on keto than I did when I ate like not keto. All right, let me see. What's the best? Wait, okay, what's the best approach to losing the last bit of? Oh, that's why I talked about fat. So, um, 
Uh, but Greg, you know that. I think I've talked to Greg before. Yeah. You need to get sleep. That's when you have growth hormone release, growth hormone release, and you know you guys that don't sleep well, you're kind of insulin resistant, and you can't lose fat, the flank stuff, until you're insulin sensitive. That's the short of it, unless you guys want me to do a longer one. Uh, what do ketones at 6.0 mean? It means that they're circulating high in the bloodstream, and they're not getting into the cell. It's not dangerous because they, the ketones really don't become acidic until it's 14 millimolar and six is nothing. It just means that you're not using them. Um, let me see here. Can you convert cacao butter? Um, if you don't have histamine intolerance, so I'm like going to the side because the, the comments are on this side and then I can only see on that side. My knee hurts. I keep putting it up on a chair. Okay. Uh, let me see. Is it okay my blood sugar to go to 86 in an hour after two hours after a meal? I mean, if you really want to be ketotic, you want your blood sugar to be between uh, like 70 to 80. If it's 86, it's not bad, but it's like your brain's like, well, there's 86 milligrams per deciliter of glucose. Why would I use a lot of ketones? So it's really best to try to get it down as you try to get your ketones over 1.8. And I don't care. I love me some Stephen and Jeff Foley, but 0.5 millimolar of ketones makes people still hypoglycemic and tired. I've seen it a million times because y'all know I've coached thousands of people and I'm sorry I'm talking fast. I'm just trying to get the information out quickly before I get out here. And that's the only reason why I'm spazzing out. Of course, I got energy because I'm on keto. Okay, let's see here. So two hours after a meal, it should drop to fasted number and it should be between 69 to 80 or 70 to 80. But with energy and ketones over 1.8 to 3.0. Is fat storage hormone more sensitive after being on keto? Is fat storage hormone? You mean insulin? Is it more sensitive? It's a weird question. You become more insulin sensitive on keto if you do it the right way. Sorry, I'm going to the side. I keep thinking like these comments are messing up my perspective. <laughs> okay, uh, what's a nightshade? So nightshades are like tomatoes, potatoes, things of this nature, root vegetables. There you go. Okay, listening to stuff keeps me motivated in the world, right? I know that I'm coming across as really spastic, you guys. Normally, I'm not like this. Again, I'm trying to hit all the questions and then get out. But if you guys understood what was going on in my head, the things that I see, it's crazy. I mean, the, if you guys could get inside my head, you'd be like, damn. You know, we're just disconnected. I'm just seriously into the science of the modern human and the ancient human, how we lived in a more simple time. People don't even look at each other in the eye here. I'm like, at all. Like, I'll literally be at the gym and be around these people around every single day. And I'll be like, this is so weird. I've seen this person 5,000 times. And you look to smile and then they look away because it's too awkward of a moment to connect in a human. So like, I'm so into all of that. It's very fascinating. I look younger. But I'm, I, I was around before all the technology, so I saw people how people acted totally different than they do now. And the millennials think this stuff is normal. This isn't normal. Okay, let's see here. More questions. Very hard to yeah, it's very hard to adapt on the graveyard shift. You would have to be a third shift night worker. You have to be very very homeostatically balanced in between working uh, working, and a lot of people don't do that. They stay cranked up all the time. Should we fix our gut before starting keto? No, you can use keto to fix your gut. Yes. But if you do keto, you just got to make sure your macros are on point and that you sleep well. Then you're, then you're good to go. Yes, I agree. It is super sad the way things are today. And I used to allow them to affect me, but I don't anymore because I'm in my 50s. It's like I don't care. People are like, rah, 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 and I don't even react. Where I was very much a reactor before, right? I'm an alpha female. I have an opinion. But now I don't even care to have an opinion because like what person am I bouncing an opinion off of? Like, <laughs> does it really matter? I hear people argue, I'm like, why? Who cares? You know, they're asking me, I, me my political opinions and I don't think that way. I think about does that person sleep, right? Are they hitting circadian rhythm? Are, they, are their endocrine hormones off? Is their hypothalamus, hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal, and thyroid axis working because if you, let's say if you have low testosterone, men, it's a wrap. You're and like women who are estrogen dominant, cray, 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 cray. And we don't talk about that, the dysregulation of our hormones and how that affects our neurochemistry. 
Okay, you lost 60, wait, 60 pounds. Wait, let's see this. You lost 60 pounds, 35 more to go. Plateau, increasing protein. Did intermittent fasting, but plateau. Of course, see, you're doing it. You don't, you don't need, yeah, you, it's a gongo, or gongo. Yeah, gongo was trying to explain that, like, it, basically, you got to be careful with intermittent fasting. You can lose weight, but you can lose muscle. Like I said, muscle ha creates this mex me mex metabolic flexibility. And once you become inflexible because your insulin or your gut or your receptors or your lept or the hormones are jacked, it's a wrap. You can't use short term, um, like uh, when people are so superficial, uh, to they want to focus on their aesthetics. They don't think about the internal health. People are like, okay, somebody asked me, Steph, what do I do to lose weight on keto once I'm adapted? I'm like, no, no, you don't understand. Once you adapt, if you're adapting, you're going to lose the weight because you're going to become what? more metabolically sound. You're going to have more coupling of that mitochondria, right? You're going to develop insulin sensitivity and you're going to have that insulin drop. These are the things that we're not considering. And when you guys go online and you're hearing them talk about intermittent fasting, the coffee, the coconut oil, the MCT oil, ridiculous craze, um, people are eating cheese, nuts, like, oh, we used to eat cheese, nuts, and fruits in the wild. I'm like, yeah, before we Frankensteined it all out, nothing's normal anymore. People are like, oh, but like, I eat organic. I'm like, no, 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 baby cakes. No, sugar, sugar pie. Well, I'm not talking about organic. That just means it wasn't sprayed with glyphosate, hopefully. <laughs> you know, I'm talking about actually altering the structure of Mother Nature so we can feed our addiction. Okay. Goat cheese, no. Most goats are eating like the most, see, what's, what, what is the most natural and clean source? A goat? A wild goat? I was eating wild goats. Oh, it's not that easy. There's not a lot of non corn fed goats out there, unfortunately. Hey, girl. So, excuse me. Why does it bug me that people call me girl? I call, I'll be like, girl, what time is it? You know? And then when people call me girl, I'm like, I don't like that. I'm a total hypocrite. Okay. Stephanie, just, just call me Steph. Okay, just consume a lot of sodium. I don't consume a lot of sodium. I consume enough sodium that my body needs because I'm not holding on too much water. So I gotta make sure that I don't eat too much sodium because my sodium potassium balance will get jacked, right? You can't eat a lot of sodium without having a lot of potassium because you're gonna lower your potassium storages and then you're fracked. How can you lower your ketones with there's no such thing as perfect glucose. If your glucose is between 69 and 80 and your ketones are low, that's just hypoglycemia. So we gotta change our verbiage and understand the difference. I'm just saying. This is the business at the age of almost 51. I just wanna keep prefacing, prefacing that because I see so many new people in this chat who are like, who is this girl? Uh, how do you keep track of your electrolytes? Well, you can make sure that you get potassium rich foods like spinach, avocado, make sure you don't have sensitivities or histamine intolerance to those particular foods. Um, and also you got to make sure that you can get things in like Celtic or Celtic or Himalayan salt in there, good quality salt without all the byproducts and all the issues. Um, and also magnesium, unfortunately our so soils are depleted of magnesium. So you're going to have to do a spray. You can do a transdermal magnesium or you can do an oral magnesium. Magnesium glycinate, it's a game changer every day. Yes. Magnesium is really the only supplement that I'm like, you got to really have it. And also, I've been reading about vegans trying to do keto but without L-carnitine. So L-carnitine helps to convert acetyl-CoA into acetate to get into the Krebs cycle. And this is like new stuff that people are talking about besides the fat soluble vitamins and the fatty acid profile it's really important that you guys get l-carnitine in that you're getting your electrolytes in and your magnesium and potassium and that's why you guys are feeling your heartbeat especially on the fasting is because you're not getting enough potassium which is really not good okay we got 100 people in the chat and for those who just who are just like who's this crazy girl i'm schooling you on the keto so if you want to give me some love the 30 people 
in this chat uh, that because what it does the thumb stuff I hate it sound like a used car salesman but what it actually does is it helps to have more visibility on YouTube and a lot of people cannot find me because there's a lot of ketogenic people now giving you misinformation giving you broad strokes and no science so they're not talking about shikimate pathways or mTOR pathways or how the body converts body fat into usable energy like people don't talk about that they just talk about like weight loss and like I did keto and lost 40 pounds and they really just don't know and even the PhD sometimes because I just came back from paleo effects which is kind of like amazing I was on a panel with Rob Wolf and well the two people that I really love is Rob Wolf and Nora Gagoutis who's in this new documentary on uh, Netflix and I forget what it's called, I haven't even watched it yet, but um, it was really, really cool to be up there with these really hardcore PhDs and like spit out information that they don't know because they're not working with people, right? So a lot of it's anecdotal, it's theoretical, it's science studies, which can be subjective because it doesn't address all populations. And most studies are over short term and not long term. And as we know, that if you don't do keto long enough, you don't have the ability to potentially adapt take some of these questions here proof yes I'm living proof that keto works as you guys this is a keto body let me I, I don't want to sound narcissistic but the reason I dress like this is because you can go back what eight years in my videos and be like you can see that I haven't gone like this with the body fat and then then lean I mean I've been pretty consistent because I've been really strict so the signs that I'm adapted that you see in me is that my skin does not look dry now Brown skin, my melanocytes are gonna protect my skin, my collagen a little bit more than somebody of fair skin. But with that said, you can still be dry in your skin, right? Very dry if you are dieting or not eating a lot of fat. So my skin, which isn't very wrinkly, is filled with fat. So you can see the fat in the skin, you can see it, right? And then the face, you don't see fine wrinkles in the skin. So then you see that I'm not vascular. So as you guys can see, I'm not dieting, I'm not on any diuretics, there's no veins, right? You ever see those girls on Instagram and they're just shredded, where they're destroying their metabolism. So I'm lean without looking dry. So you see that there's a layer of fat. So to me, this is a healthy look, right? For a woman, I am in my 50s, I'm turning 51 soon. So this is what I love about being ketotic. That means that my skin, my collagen, my organs, because a lot of our, are the cells, all the cells in our, the cell lining needs fat. So when people do a low fat diet, those are the symptoms. The skin gets really dry, gets paper thin. They can pull the skin out to here. Um, they look gaunt in their face. So I can enjoy having low body fat around, let's say 12, 13% body fat without you know, my period every 28 days, six days long, like in my 50s, it's not going anywhere because I have the substrates to build my sex hormones. And when your sex hormones, because you're dieting, you're crazy when you don't have enough estrogen, especially women to progesterone balance. And when your testosterone drops, exactly a magic pill. So I was on stage with Nora Gagatis. I mean, we actually kind of go way back, she and I, but we actually got to meet for the first time at Paleo Effects on a panel talking about keto. Let's see, what methods of detoxifying? So detoxifying can just be to clear out inflammatory foods because you don't know what you're reacting off of. Make sure that you're drinking enough water because that's gonna help liver kidney function. A lot of people don't drink enough water. They're like, can I drink tea? Can I drink cotton? Like, no, you need water to clear out the liver kidney detoxification stuff, pathways. Um, does she love her son? Nora was a trip. Like I've never met her before. Like we have spoken. I used to always do videos talking about her. So she like reached out to me like, thank you so much for, you know, and so we've kind of like emailed each other back and forth, but I never met her until I actually went to the paleo effects and then I'm on the panel with her. I was like, what? Y'all put me on the panel with my like keto God goddess. It was really, it was like one of those moments in life where you can pinch yourself. And I've had a few of those moments, like one, when I was a pro skateboarder, Two, I made a movie, right? That's another story. I made a movie, 100 people on set, I directed the film, I was, and people were auditioning, and I was about to cry because it, and I wrote the script, and then now. This now, my mother's surviving cancer through keto, or 
I don't know, a lot of things like who knows. We also use apricot cores and vitamin C and uh, CBDs and all this kind of stuff. Uh, best, there is no best macro website. I'm sorry. The best is to use the one where you can scan the bar and get the actual macro breakdown from what the company put in there and not like uh, my fitness pal. No, that's garbage. Oh, elderly Sandra, Sandra G. Yes, of course. Like keto is amazing, but it's not keto. It's the application of it. Cheese is, you know, Kerrygold cheese. No, cheese has casein. You guys, that has growth factors in it. That really, really damages us. And you guys, people keep saying, but I keep seeing it on the internet. And that's why people don't look at, look at them. Look at them. They are not living proof of how keto. And then you have some guys on steroids talking about keto. I'm like, really? Get off all your HRTs, get off all your growth hormone, get off the testosterone, and let's see what happens. <laughs> uh, Dina, your message got retracted. That's weird. Okay, hey, I hate I hate you, fitness like street. What? Sorry, I don't even know what that what you're trying to say. My brother. Okay, what about constipation? So constipation on keto comes from you guys again, your electrolyte balance is low, you're not drinking enough water, so the bowels dry up. And it should pass. But a lot of you guys have your macros incorrect on keto, and that's the reason why some of you develop constipation. Let me see here. What about, okay, blah, blah, blah. What, just big, huge capitalism. Okay, I can read it. Okay. Uh, uh, what do you recommend to deal with stress? So, like, weird things are like mouth taping. A lot of you guys don't realize that you're not sleeping well at night because your mouth is open. And when, when your mouth is open, it's like you're running from a lion. So your nervous central nervous system never relaxes. So there's these tapes. I'll do a video on it. There's a tape and there's a little hole in the middle and it forces your mouth shut. And this breathing through your nose begins to relax your nervous system because we don't do enough uh, breathing techniques in the daytime. We're like stressed and we're tense and we're on the computer. Or we're like trolling on the internet and we don't ever relax. And a lot of you guys don't work out so you don't get enough blood supply to the muscle cell, which I talked about the flexible mitochondria. Um, but a lot of it's uh, stress can be inflammatory, it could be the wrong foods, it can be drinking, it can be caffeine. Sometimes we clear that out, you're actually mood or your hormones. Like men, when your testosterone is low, you guys are like chicks. When men testosterone lowers, and you, you, you don't want you want, the, you want to know what that looks like, it's when you don't get the gains, right? It's when you don't get an erection. When you're just not as like virile as you were before, you get depressed. And women, easy breezy. We're, it's so easy to see when women have uh, hormonal issues because we get like, hooray, hooray. Um, um, nylon socks, I have no idea. I'm not a nylon stock stinky <laughs> PhD expert. Sim husk can scratch the colon, don't use it. Uh, chamomile, make sure it's loose leaf because the, the tea bags have like mycotoxins and mold. I think uh, way you apply keto has me eating more veggies than vegan than a vegan stuff. Yeah, 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 for sure. Because if you're doing if you're doing a vegan thing, you'd be eating a lot of beans. <laughs> beans, beans, musical fruit. The more you eat them, the more you toot. The more you toot, the worse you feel. So don't eat beans in every meal. You know, I kind of changed the words though. Okay, <laughs> uh, 96 with a temperature okay while doing low carb keto diet. You know, your temperature really depends on if you are actually becoming, you know, brown. I don't know, to be honest. There's a whole theory about white, white fat and brown fat and how your temperature rises or, you know, uh, um, that you become more metabolically strong when you feel like your body temperature. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I know a lot of things, not all things. Can I still lose weight if I follow a strict keto diet with 20 carbs a day? No, no, no. The diet and have 12 ounces what of what? No, 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 no. Raymond, Raymond, get off the Coke. It's like cocaine, bruh. Bruh, this stuff is just poison. You'll never adapt on, on Coke, ever. It's got aspartame in it. It's a neurotoxin. And when the body is introduced to chemical toxins, the inflammation prevents ketone use. It just That's why you got to go clean. You got to clean that stuff up. <laughs> There's apps. You got to go Google it. There's one, I forget the name, that, that like you can scan the, you know, you can download it onto your phone and scan it and it'll give you the macro breakdown and then you write it, right? Or you use an app that's like just that you track your own numbers in. Hard time planning my meals. Any tips? Uh, if you don't have to have histamine intolerance, you can take like chicken drummies, throw them, like spray them with coconut oil, spice them, throw them in the oven. You can make 20 of them at one time. 
That's what I do sometimes when I don't have time. Make a sack of keto pancakes or um, my version, clearly. Um, let's see here. Uh, la, la, la. Let's go to get 100 likes. Oh, I guess I need to pimp myself more. All right, guys, let's see if we can get to 100 likes, right? Right? I know I'm not a dude, right? I know I'm not a bodybuilder dude, and I know I'm not 25 and like beautiful 25 year old guy, right? But give me some likes. Come on, people. All right, somebody said, I know we can get 100 likes. I know we can get 100 likes by the end of this broadcast. Give this, this female some love. Yes! Oh, that was awesome. That was really cool. Thank you, guys. I really do appreciate that. I didn't think you would hit the number. Wow. That's a, that's a feel-good moment. I appreciate it. That means that the people who are in the ca uh, broadcast are digging the info. So thank you, guys. Uh, thank you, Anna. Beautiful 50. But you know what? I think it's hard for men um, and maybe sometimes women to have a woman sit and break down science. It seems kind of like... I don't know why that men are taken more seriously, but uh, I definitely know that if I was a 25 year old da -da 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 male, I'd probably get more attention, but I'm not. And I'm pretty straight. Like I tell people certain foods are inflammatory. So my version of keto is not internet sexy because you have to deconstruct before you reconstruct. You have to consider all the inflammation in your body because I can go to the gym I, okay, I live in LA, and there are models at my gym. It's the gym where all the models go. Okay, I can walk into the girls' bathroom, and I'm like, Woo! Woo! What is going on with your intestine? Like, they've got leaky gut. They have loose stool. They've got candida, a lot of these women. I can smell their vaginosis. I am not kidding. I am not kidding. Okay, so a lot of you guys need to understand that real beauty is from your internal health. Because over time, you won't be young forever, and then you have to consider the catabolism of your body. I use that so many parts. Like, because I just know, I can know the smell of too much protein, that when people, when guys are drinking too much protein, the kidney is overworking. So the smell that people smell like when they're drinking too many whey protein shakes or even pea protein. It's like a cross between cheese, um, bologna, and like metal. It's, it makes me gag. And the reason why it makes me gag is because I know that their kidneys are overworking. So when you understand smells or like when people have like candida and I can smell that in their stool, it's like, oh. Okay, how to lower ketones, please. Okay, so what are your ketones, Majave, like Majav? What are your ketones? What, like, are they at sixes? It could mean that you just have leaky gut. So unfortunately, you're losing fat. Check to see if your stool is floating, if it's floating or too loose. It could be that your fat, your ketones aren't being absorbed, and that's why they rise too high. Or the fact that... Uh, you're just inflamed and that the body's not uptaking the ketones because you're inflamed. Uh, okay, I'm good at what I do. I have to take it back into the way of... Blah, blah, blah. Um, thank you, Kismet. There's a way that you got to like just deconstruct. I mean, don't allow food to be so addictive. Now, I make really good food. If y'all were in my kitchen, you'd be like, this is really good. And I, I really try to make my food taste well. But because I'm a bit, I've been doing keto for 10 years without refeeding, all of those crazy food cravings are gone. Then I'm not ruled by food, which is another level. And the reason why you can build muscle on keto is because your body's no longer accessing muscle to convert into glucose so you don't go into a coma or go through these dips of brain fog. So then my brain is getting all the nutrients it needs because I always have a restaurant right here when you're ketotic. So when you're a carb burner, you do not actually access the fat. You can access muscle. So muscle can be converted through gluconeogenesis back into glucose very quickly. So your brain gets the fuel. And if you're a ketotic person, you just burn the fat. So I eat about 230 grams of fat a day, which is like to the average person, the average person eats 30 grams of fat. And I eat between two and 300. So you can see I'm not getting fat 
on fat because I have my insulin regulated. So I've become insulin sensitive and all the insulin receptors in my body are working. They're not blunted. So these are the things that we don't talk about. People are talking about calories. Like, Yo, find out if your insulin's blunted. Yeah, that's a huge thing. Okay, well, let's see here. Getting free keto guidelines. Yeah, I'm giving free keto guidelines. <laughs> Drink 12 pack of beer last night. I felt bad today. Yeah, that sucks, Raymond. How do I make your pancakes? Um, you guys, you know, I'm writing a book. I'm trying, like, under contracts, I can't give out my recipes. Uh, and I kind of like that because then, you know, I want you guys to focus more on clean food rather than the carb substitutes. Although I have one, you can do it straight flax if you've got coconut sensitivities. You can actually do a pancake without even the egg if you have an egg, is egg issue. Okay, let's see here. The seasonings, oh, and the way you cook the food. Like, I'll do, like, pork belly, right? And I'll take the pork belly, and I'll uh, rub it in oil, I'll rub it in salt, and then I'll bake it. And then the salt are cooking in the juices. And then when you cut it, it just flops, and it's just, when you eat it, you're like, oh, it's so good. So there's a lot of cooking techniques that you guys don't realize when you say, like, I'm not, I don't get to eat anything on keto. It's so restrictive. I can't have my cheese. Ugh. Like, People really have to change their thinking. It's it's um, it's way more easy than than it seems like. Okay, how do you get your body to use ketones? Oh, you're the one with six point oh. Um, I told you you have to get your macros on point, fleet correct. You got to check if you got leaky gut, heal the gut wall, and sleep. That's like the fast answer. Uh, yeah, cottage uh, cream cheese is garbage. It's got casein in it. it just pokes ho pokes holes in the gut wall. You'll never adapt on cream cheese. It's never gonna happen ever. It's too inflammatory. It's, it's meant to take a 75 pound calf and grow to a 2,000 pound bull, that casing growth factor. And it's all those little sciencey things that nobody thinks about because they just see all this keto food porn. I've been on keto for six months. I can barely eat these days. Um, maybe you have a gallbladder problem there. Fado, 1179. Let's see these days. I just feel so, fill up so quickly. Um, that's not good. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm, something's going on, Fido. Like, people are, are they're like, oh, that was a thing that we had on the panel at the Paleo Facts. Like, people are under eating because they, they're full when really you might not have enough stomach acid or ox, or bile, not ox, sorry, bile salts to break down the fat, and that's what's making you feel full. So, there's always an answer. You know, you might have some uh, digestion of fat issues, which is why you feel full on it. No Kerrygold cheese. Cheese is garbage, guys. It's garbage. It's got casein in it. I just explained it. It's a growth factor. It's, it's got IGF-1. You know, they're connecting it to autism and, like, gut permeability issues. Just, like, it's super addictive. And that's the reason why people fight for those foods. Cheese, nuts, caffeine. Like, they just want to eat that. And berries. There's a lot more food groups out there that are way more nutrient-dense, guys, with less anti-nutrients in them. So, Raymond, everybody's different on the amount of protein, but I often say to people, keep it under 100. For women, it's uh, clearly under, way, like under 80, closer down to the 50s, depending on how active you are to some varying, varying degree and how absorptive you are, right? Because you want to absorb your proteins, right? You want to have your mTOR pathways working good. Okay, let's see, you get stomach issues. Okay, you, got, you get stomach issues and pain when I'm eating green vegetables. So, Dina, sounds like histamine intolerance. Yeah, so a lot of people are super allergic to vegetables because of the salicylates, the oxalates, the goitrogens, the lectins, the nightshades, and these are the chemicals. You're, when people are eating vegetables out of season, some people are super sensitive to them, and they get stomach aches, they get breakouts, they have loose stool, and they never connect, they get bloated on vegetables, and they never, ever, ever think that the vegetables are hurting them. It's really interesting because we're eating foods out of season. So now we're getting a lot of plant chemicals all year long, which what? Create holes, those junctions in the gut wall that make them bigger. You said poverty was hard. <laughs> right, because people are like, oh my God, it's so hard. And I get pissed because I do a lot of traveling. I've been to a lot of places where there's a lot of poverty. And I'll sit and I'll be like, I'll get embarrassed. When I see people living in object or abstract poverty, I, I get literally embarrassed. I could be sitting in my part apartment getting bummed about something and I'll be like, I literally had stop. Stephanie, remember what your eyes have seen. No, it, it literally snaps me out. So when people say things are hard, I'm like, stop. 
mm -mm, it's not hammer time. It is not time for this complaining. <laughs> no cacao, no raw cacao, mycotoxins, caffeine, and it's, it does a mess. No. You guys got candida. No. Cacao butter, the white chocolate does not. Lunch meat, no. Poor quality. I mean, Applegate has some uncured, like I bought some Applegate uncured roast beef when I went to the Paleo FX and I was making sandwiches out of it. That's fine, but the classic stuff with nitrates and garbage and sugar, no. No, dementia and keto? No, 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 no. Mm. Carbs, right? Type 3 diabetes. I talked about the insulin receptors, the brain, because glucose can pass the blood brain barrier. That's what creates dementia, right? The misfiring of the neurons, the shrinking, the dying of the cells. The brain is made out of saturated fat. That's what cures Alzheimer and dementia. Boop. Um, I'm going to actually release the talk that I uh, filmed at the Paleo Effects. I haven't uh, created a, another seminar. Last year I was doing a big seminar tour and talking about this stuff. But I'm like, I'm writing this book. You guys know I'm writing it with this Ultimate Keto book. Stevia is fine as long as it doesn't have a, like, a sensitivity reaction. Uh, Peterson's bacon. Oh, I wanted to show you guys this stuff. So at the, um, I forgot that was on my sofa. So here's Peterson's Bacon, you guys, and they made single packages of bacon, which I thought was really cool for those who travel or people who've got blood sugar instability and fatty meats, uh, sorry vegans, but fatty meats often stabilize blood sugar if it's from the healthy source. Lorisidin is, is very expensive. Um, there's also a non-brand called Manolorin. So Lorisidin is like $37, but let me tell you one thing. The $37 lower seed in, let me show you what it looks like. So I'm almost out. I bought this like, I don't know, eight months ago. So this is concentrated lauric acid from uh, coconut oil. And it's antimicrobial, anti hello, antimicrobial, antifungal, antiviral. So I attribute this to the breaking down of the biofilms, also uh, taking down the candida spores, and also I never get sick. If this is costing $37 and can last a, a, like eight months, like come on now. This is when I did the reviews on Amazon, it was like this is the best brand. You can get Mono Lauren, but like this one's, that's what's up. Oh my God, I'm gonna do a video on this stuff, you guys. So this guy was walking around, his name, name is uh, Adam something. Um, it's uh, concentrated, um, uh, what is it called? It's concentrated Gymnema Sylvestra. It's an herb, you spray it on your tongue five times and it makes sugar taste like ass. And I told him, I was like, bro, this label, horrible. Like, it's basic. It looks like a sample label. Like, put some pretty graphics on this. So the company is called Sugar Free Me. I'm not a product pusher. I have nothing to do with this guy. I just thought it was a really cool product. And he walked up to me at the Paleo FX to show me this product. So you guys have insane sugar cravings. This stuff, bomb. On the tongue, like banaka. Bum, 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 bum. And when you try to eat sugar, it tastes really bland. It doesn't make it taste bad. It just has absolutely no flavor whatsoever. So check out this dude, Sugar Free Me. You can Google it. I don't know if it's dot, I think it's dot US or something like that instead of dot com, but Sugar Free Me. And his name is Adam. I forgot his net last name. It's like Stoltz or Schultz or something like that. Yeah, so this is really great. You spray it on your tongue and it kills. I've known about Gymnema, but his is super concentrated. So before, like eight years ago, I was talking about Gymnema, they couldn't get it concentrated enough. It would kill the taste of sugar if you rubbed it on your tongue for like 30 minutes. This stuff lasts four hours, so he said. So he made me go at the, huh? What? <laughs> um, yeah, um, Mojab, like anything that you do that's inflammatory, the body will reject the ketones, which can make them swim too high, not go into the cells. Let's see, I'm, I'm also around four, four what? Uh, four millimolar, that's still too high. You gotta get between, you gotta get under three, 1.8 to 3.9. What is the best way to narrow down what, ca what is causing my stomach bloating, stomach aches, FYI, last year I had gallbladder taken out, stones, biopsy showed stones. Okay, so Anne, 
uh, you have to deal with the fact that maybe your HCL levels have dropped the stomach acid, so you might need betaine HCL with pepsin. I don't know. You might have a sensitivity to these vegetables, so rotate them and cook them. Yes. Eat your food until it turns into a liquid because you have to think about eating something, digesting, then the gate opens up to go to the small intestine, and when things are moving through too quickly, it can give you a stomach ache. There's a lot of stuff. Like, I can't even cover it all. But... <laughs> Uh, bile salts, yes, from an ox, bovine ox, yes. Can you make a list of keto foods you can eat? They're on my website, but it needs to be updated. You can go to my website, uh, which is stephanieperson.com. You guys know I'm writing the Ultimate Keto book. I just came back from Paleo FX to talk there with, you know, some of my favorite people. I will be doing another seminar tour, but I don't know when. And I still do consultations. You guys see, I know what time it is. I know what I'm talking about. I've been working with so many people. It's like... It's almost like I, I can cut them off and tell them what they need to do or how it was before they finish the sentence. Okay, please talk about the effects of menopause. Okay, so um, CS, menopause. So menopause, a lot of, we, we're on this low fat craze. So sex hormones are made 100% out of cholesterol. Now, other hormones like insulin, they're not made out of, out of cholesterol, but uh, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone made out of cholesterol. So people do low fat diets. They don't have enough building material to balance their sex hormones. Also, xenoestrogens in the diet from plastics, microwaves, like makeup, freaking shampoo, like like everything has BPA in it. It'll make your estrogen get too high and that's what starts in progesterone and that's the onset, right? And drop your testosterone. That's the onset of menopause. So then you have the blood sugar dysregulation and women are dumping coffee when they should be resting and then they're like forcing their body to, to exert all this force and their adrenals start to have too much cortisol. That will also create uh, the onset of menopause. Then also the fact that they don't sleep. So sleep you re repair, especially between 9 p.m. and 12 midnight, right? The first half of sleep is the body. So if you're not sleeping deep, which most people don't, in those hours, then your hormones offset and then you trigger menopause. I need to drink some water, people. I'm dehydrated. All right, um, we got 20, 129 people in the, in the, in the chat. Can we reach at least a hundred and something? We're 118. Can we get up to 127? One person hit the like button. Okay, three did. Come on, guys. Let's hit 127. 120. Okay, cool. Apple cider vinegar is great for people who don't have gut issues. Um, I will review uh, the magic pill I've got. I know I've already heard there's a lot of misinformation. When I listen to misinformation, I want to cringe. But at least Nora Gagatis is in it, and that's like, you know, one of my favorite people and all this kind of stuff. Uh, do you believe in blood type diets? No. Now, there can be some small varying degrees, but you guys, we are almost the same as a rat. I mean, we are almost like one chromosome difference between us and apes. So the blood types, uh, carb ups, no. Courtney, you can't carb up on keto. It literally will wreck your metabolism. I mean, it will really dysregulate your blood sugar like cray, cray, and your adrenals and cortisol. No, you either do keto or you don't. You don't carb up, okay? If you carb up, that means going off of keto, and then when you carb up, you have to be careful of the type of carbs that you reintroduce or you freak out your body. Uh, oh, we got, we got them, we got 136, thank you, you guys. I forgot to look at that. Um, I'm sitting on a stool because my knee hurts, you guys. I don't know if you know, I was a professional skateboarder, like Tony Hawk, yes, Tony Hawk, because um, in my face. He's actually actually a year younger than me, and so because my knee, I broke everything in my knee. It's been hurting, and that's why I'm sitting on a stool. Normally I'm standing, but now I'm sitting. Okay, so you can't do cardio circuits now. I mean, you have to see where your blood pressure is, your blood sugar, your sleep. If everything's cool, you're metabolically sound, you can do the HIIT training. If not, resistance training, period, straight up, and not heavy. Um, so, gray hair on keto slows it down. I should say so because... All that glucose can kind of, it's the theory is you can kill the hair follicles, right? From having the advanced glycation end product, which is the destruction of the cells. Plus you want to get enough zinc in in your diet in, in general, which helps with the gray hair and testosterone and all kind of stuff. Thyroid. We don't get enough of our macro, our macro and micronutrients in our body. Okay. Developing hypothyroid systems, how to reverse it. Okay. So Rebecca, like, again, it's the sleep, it's your macros, it's how you breathe. It's getting away from screen time. It's getting off caffeine and the wrong foods that are inflammatory. You might have a histamine response. Food sensitivities you're not aware of. The thyroid's a big subject. I can't hit it in an answer. 
Um, do you have any info concerning almond meal? So almond meal, so almonds are actually pretty toxic. We have hybridized them to be edible, but people, a lot of people react off of them. And first of all, there's too many carbs, there's mycotoxins, there's too many phytates, get rid of almond butter, it's not ketogenic. That's paleo, that's not keto. Boop! <laughs> Is beef and butter fast, fast good for, for what? Sorry, you gotta rephrase that question before I get my ass out of here. Is it good to do low intensity cardio? No. Edward, stay away from cardio. Fix your body. Nobody needs to do, go take a walk outside, right? Go take a hike, don't do cardio. Lift. That's what helps the mitochondria flexibility. Do you just know how to build up legs? Wait, leg glutes? What do you eat to make them bigger? First of all, you got to have like the good glute, like muscle belly, you can't see these <laughs> cargo pants. But um, I have a good glute muscle belly shape. It's the shape of the glutes, right? So I have a lot of ethnic mis mixes in me, but one that I have is the Mandigualuba Waluba African jeans that create nice high glute boop boop. Fell when I went through all those knee syndrome surgeries. I went through 10, four years on crutches and I had to build my glutes back. But um, there's a lot of ways. It's, I would say that you start with your diet and sleep because you're not gonna have growth hormone re response and to make sure your testosterone is balanced before you even do one exercise. The whole body really is about uh, stress management and what you eat. I gotta do my yoga though. Do your yoga. But you gotta, you know, the main thing, KJ, is resistance yeah because yoga is static it doesn't rub the filaments together no uh, cordella you have to think about your sleep stress um, like I said plant chemicals the state of your gut candida it's not just about but just shoving food in your mouth and you're gonna adapt it's never gonna happen it takes months for people to do to adapt you've got to have stomach acid you have a functioning gallbladder there's all these things that you have to realize that no one talks about on the internet. They don't talk about this. I don't know what they talk about, but it's not about the gallbladder. <laughs> oh, I'm so silly today. I don't, you don't, you, you intermittent fast, no days. Fix your metabolism first. And if you, if you're going to intermittent, intermittent fast and skip breakfast, uh, then don't, don't work. Don't chill, you know. Put your feet up and relax so you don't become catabolic. <laughs> oh, my husband has rare blood cancer. Doctor put him on drugs to suppress bone marrow, trying to make him anemic. Said to stay away from high iron foods, meats can stay on keto. Blah, blah, blah. Um, first of all, and I don't have enough information. Okay, one of my best friends is a hematologist. I can call her in two seconds and tell you. She's also an oncologist, she's a double PhD. But, uh, and she's a perfect person to talk to you about this disorder that your husband has. But I don't, first of all, and I, I'm not a doctor, so she would have more of the answer than I would. Oh, they talk about ball, gallbladder wet, like Dr. Mercola, Dr. Berg, they got products. <laughs> oh, goodness, goodness. Keto has just become this money-making H-E-double-L. It's embarrassing. Okay, can they talk about golf? Wait, 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 maybe you should join some of the keto Facebook groups. I would rather stick a fork in my eye than join those groups. That is the most painful thing I could ever experience. I can't. It irks me beyond measure. It'll give me a rash. I will never join those groups. I don't even want to know what these people are doing and talking about. They argue with each other. They're misinformed. Ugh! I can't. I just can't. I can't. Sorry, KJ. I can't. That's like torture to me. That's more. That's worse than wa Chinese water torture. <laughs> oh, Christopher Leakey got. I explained it before. It's about going to sleep, staying away from foods that open up the the junctions of your colon, getting your stress down, and it, it'll seal on its own. And rotating foods that are most problematic. Okay, guys, I think I should go through thoughts on calorie def deficit, trying to lose. Few. Okay, again, Nicola, uh, our body doesn't work like a sink, right? You pour water in it, there's a drain and it pours out, like calories in, calories out. You have to consider the fact that 
500 calories from let's say pork belly or steak is not going to be broken down and used the same way as 500 calories from ice cream or cookies. And so one's going to have a huge insulin spike. Now weight gain is all about insulin. So you should learn more about insulin in the pancreas and the beta cells than about calories in, calories out. Because if you have leptin resistance, if you've got high estrogen, you ain't going to lose no weight. Mm -mm. Not if you've trained your body fat cells to store fat. Not if you're hypogluconeogenic. Not if you drink coffee or alcohol or any. Why is my phone giving me indications? Go away. Okay, so no. Uh, I do have thoughts on it, but I'm, I'm kind of getting tired of being... I've done... I did a broadcast on my... You guys, I have a Keto Course Facebook group, so I was doing a live broadcast for two hours on that. Plus, I did a consultation this morning, so I'm kind of getting cranky now. Chlorella, spirulina, they can be great. Just make sure that it's well-sourced and there's no toxins within the pond that they grow this algae. Down, 64 pounds. Thank you. Oh, okay, cool, Sasha. What, what? I hope you didn't lose no muscle. We don't want to lose muscle because that is our metabolic flexibility. But I'm really proud of you all, though. Thank you, everyone. I think it's time to go. We surpassed the likes over the people in the chat. Normally, I would not talk about such ridiculousness as likes, but all it literally does is make my video more visible so I can get the proper information out there. Um, can you listen to your keto talk? Like, oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Flex? And then when I flex, they're like, show off you're a show off and i'm like darn right at 51 with 10 surgeries on the left knee boom i will show it all day long and when you all turn 51 and have a severe knee, knee injury you'll understand <laughs> i'm just saying thank you guys and you know i'm super silly if you go back to my videos like i can't even watch them kind of like those facebook groups um but i really appreciate people who join the chat and hopefully i can kind of reestablish all of this misinformation and garbage on the inter inter internet uh, no my oncologist friend works as a doctor she has her own practice and so no I'm sorry and if I get a chance to talk to her I can ask her about your husband and like getting off his meds because uh, it's depleting the iron I, I believe you got it you can show it yeah, I mean, I'm not literally trying to show off. There is a sense of, because uh, I meet people all the time in my age group who've got really bad knee injuries, and then they'll give excuses why they gain weight. And so the reason why I even dress like this is so no one can talk smack, right? I practice what I preach. I eat the way I live, and that's the reason why I show it. It's not, not, a, not, not a 2,000 videos deep. You know, I show my body all the time. It's not about that. It's literally, I want to show people I'm not on any drugs. I'm not doing anything exogenous. I'm not, you know, low body fat. I have my men low body fat with no menstrual cycle. I'm not dry. There's no veins. And I, I'm not aging like you guys see people age so much. Um, I mean, I am aging, but I've slowed down the aging process. And that's the reason why I show it. <laughs> oh, so I haven't seen the magic pill yet. I will. I will. Sun-kissed keto. Uh, I can't say that Nora Gaudis is in it, and she and I were on the panel talking about keto together, so Stephanie has, like, moving on up to the top, right, to a deluxe apartment in the keto sky. I feel like I'm just, like, the people's keto person, and I got to talk on a panel with really famous people. It was, like, such an honor, so check that out. Uh, you have a horrible knee, please show off. Okay, keto inspiration. Thank you, stuff body keto legitimacy. Thank you! Yes, haters want to hate, but at least people don't say, like, you're not in shape. <laughs> but you know what they do say? You've never had any kids. That's why you look like that. I'm like, okay, keep thinking that. <laughs> My brother's never had any kids either. He's never birthed a child, and we don't look nothing alike. All right. Um, <laughs> thank you, guys. Okay, Jamie, I don't know what's going on with your pH levels, but it's not adapting. Um, there's more to that story. Why something's going on with your blood is a, assume your blood pH, but obviously I can't do it on a broadcast with a blurb. Like, you know, that's where you need a conversation with someone. So you guys, I still do uh, Matt Hensley. Did you know that I used to skate? You're talking about Matt, Matt Hensley, Lance Mountain, right? So I've skated with Lance and I've skated with Mount, uh, Matt Hensley. I actually lived with H Street guys with Danny Way. 
I lived with Danny Way for six months in a freaking house with a bunch of skater guys. Um, frozen vegetables, they kind of don't have any more fiber, but if, if you have histamine intolerance, frozen vegetables uh, can be somewhat advantageous because uh, the uh, there's less anti-nutrients. All right, thank you guys, thank you. Titus days, okay, so I'm in a few Titus videos. Titus Dittman, so you guys know, you know I'm legit, I'm legit. So you might see me, I'm also in Future Primitive, the Pal Peralta video, doing a boneless at Derby Park, skateboarding. Um, all right, guys, thank you so much. And also, I lived in Sweden, so hola! Some coming from Sverige, hello, or hey, son, or Denmark, hello, uh, Noria. So, all right, thank you, thank you, guys. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, and we hit more likes than the number in the chat. So thank you, all the hundred and something people for watching this 120-minute broadcast. All right. Peace out, guys. Thank you. Derby Park Santa Cruz. You got it, right? I was skating there all the time. You're talking about a skateboard legend here. First African-American pro female skateboarder. Way before Keto. People are like, oh, Keto. I'm like, no, skateboarding. Okay, guys, I'm out. Peace. Thank you for joining the chat. Okay, where does it say to end? Oh, it's the X. Bye, guys.